Get off the get off the counter. I was gonna say, now I have to clean this. I had to clean this anyways. There was a bunch of old meat on here. <laughs> favorite is my favorite tool my, one, one of my favorite tools I have I have many favorite tools I guess <laughs> can't find my dough hook all right Become useless because your dough hook has disappeared. All right. Never mind. I found the dough hook. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I am not centered in the shot, but it's fine. I'm never centered in the shot. So, so I'm making what I am calling leftover beef stew over in the corner. Dude, what is the best food to accent? Stews in general, especially hardier ones like beef stew. All right, you're wrong. It's bread, specifically very freshly made bread. I'm gonna show you all how to make. My pants are unbuttoned. Crap. I'm gonna show you all how to make bread. You need warm water. Warm water and yeast. Measuring cup. Cool. Is it warm yet? It's not warm yet. Be warm. Still not warm yet. This is going to be a smaller recipe. Are you warm now? You're still not warm. Cool. Smaller recipe. I'm going to take just a tablespoon. Get off the spoon. No? Okay, cool. Well, are you warm now? You're warm now. Cool. You want about a cup of water. Here's my secret. My secret to good yeast. Sugar. Right in there. Perfect. Stir that all up. Set it in the corner. Then you put all the crap that you're not using away. Now there is not a single part of this recipe that you need to rush. Got it? No rushing. You get your 30 pound box of flour out. <laughs> it's, this recipe uses four cups of flour, but you're only gonna put about three and a half into the actual dish. Now we're gonna, we're gonna mix our uh, dry ingredients together before we put in any of this. And this needs about five to 10 minutes to start propagating before we can mix anything, mix it into here anyways. So we're just gonna take that three and a half. Take this out because uh, you're gonna need it. <laughs> you, you still need more flour, remember that. Uh, you can always use more flour. Salt, I don't know, like half a teaspoon of salt. You don't have to be super accurate with this. It's not a it's not a very complex recipe. So, it if you uh, have a little bit more of one thing, a little bit less of another thing, it's fine. It's it's going to turn out just as good. I swear. I swear it will. I feel like I'm forgetting an ingredient: flour, salt, water, yeast. Oil! <laughs> this, uh, where's, uh, let's take quarter cup, quarter cup. This is, this is very, is very little oil, very little oil for this recipe. It's just a very standard white bread. You don't need, you don't, you don't need to, we're making this thing mega white. We ain't, adding too much to this. <laughs> yeah. 
I want this giant thing out of my shot. So I'm going to just take a half a cup of flour now and I'm gonna move this out of the way. So, we have let our yeast rise and there's about, there's about an inch worth of foam on top of that thing. You probably can't see it very well in the capture, in the capture, in the video, but video capture, whatever. And uh, funnily enough, we're gonna take this and we're going to immediately ruin all of that foam and just dump the whole thing in there and just mix that right up. This little trick gives the uh, this little trick gives the yeast something to incorporate into. It saturates all throughout that flour and it can uh, it can bind up onto the starches of that. It gives them something to eat. It incorporates more flavor into the flour later on, and it gives you a much more even. It gives you a much more even rise instead of having those big bubbles in random places. It's even pattern of bubbles and rising, like you would see in a store bought loaf of bread. But yeah, like you would see in a store bought loaf of bread, makes for a much better texture and a much better overall. Uh, flavor and it makes it hold together a lot better if say you were dipping it into stew so I like this method this is my favorite method Oh my god, there's so much fat. Ah. Oh yeah. But if you don't have one of these, you can do this by hand. But also if you are an avid baker and you don't have one of these, get one of these. It's it doesn't matter what it's priced, it's worth it. This turned out a little tougher than it usually does. Well, I added oil, and I don't usually add oil. But I wanted to do a legitimate recipe and follow the recipe instead of doing it the way that I do it, even though the way that I do it is delicious. And I only go wrong when people are watching. You people, people don't come into the kitchen and everything is fine, but the second somebody starts watching you, or you start recording it, then everything goes to crap. And you get this mega tough bread. You get this mega tough bread dough. Oh my gosh. Remember, good cookies are made with love. Good bread is made with violence. This is weirdly dry. Okay, okay. Keep going, just keep it going. You gotta, you gotta work on your arms, man. You never know when the bread is gonna be a little too much, it's gonna be a little too tough. I wanted it to be tough, but I didn't want it to be this tough. Oh my gosh. Okay, okay, okay. 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 Gonna let it rest and rise for a while. Bam. Good bread. Very good bread. Me? I just let the thing I let it rise and rest for a little bit in, in the bread pan. 
you don't need to cover it. This is a very dry... If, if you if you don't... If you're using it for stew like I am, you don't need to leave a cover. You don't need to cover it while it's rising and settling or whatever. Because you want it to be kind of dried out a little bit so it can better absorb the stuff and doesn't fall apart as easily when you try to dip it into your soup. And uh, after everything is risen, uh, 375 until it looks brown on the top or it starts to brown pretty much everywhere. And then you just take it out, let it cool completely to room temperature. Do not touch it until it is completely cooled or else it will ruin the entire grain of the entire bread. I don't know why it does this, but trust me, I have learned from the experience. Just let it sit. And then afterwards, cut yourself off a big old chunk, slap a little butter on that thing, or dip it in some soup, and it is... It's gonna be like four hours until I eat dinner. So, uh, y'all don't get to see the, the crumb, but uh, if you want to see crumb, just do what I did. Do exactly as I did, and then there you go. Bread.